What's up, what's going on guys? Captain Monk here. Today's video is gonna get started with a few giveaways. The first one is a giveaway I'm doing with a few of my friends who also make League of Legends content on YouTube. We're giving away $400 worth of RP. To enter is really simple. Just follow the link in the description to subscribe and follow as many pages as you'd like as each one is an entry to win. There'll be eight winners for this giveaway and each winner will receive $50 worth of RP. The second giveaway I'm doing is with Asus. Asus is the company that has made this video and the following ones to come possible by inviting me to the tournament they had hosted over in Sweden. This tournament was an amazing experience for me. I'm very thankful Asus invited me and gave me the opportunity to lead the North American team. This first giveaway will be Republic of Gamers Gladius 2 Gaming Mouse. I'll be hosting this giveaway over on my Facebook page. Make sure to follow the link in the description to the page and follow the directions to enter there. Thank you guys for listening and enjoy the video. here in a gaming cafe in Sweden and you guys would not believe how cool this place is. to the Join the Republic Community Challenge. For the first match of the day, we have Yoda and his team from Brazil, and we have Monk and his team from North America. Both of you had the opportunity to build these teams exactly how you wanted. Yoda, tell me a little bit about your team. Uh, we had for like four or three days to practice, so we didn't have so much time, but I think like we are our master and challenge players, so I think it'll be fun. Do you think you'll be able to beat the North American for team? For sure, for sure. For sure. Yeah, a lot of confidence. <laughs> All right, Monk, tell me a little bit about your team. Uh, so my team, like he was saying, is also a team of Masters and Challenger players. I'll admit I'm the weak link on the team, being just a diamond player myself, but I think I'm up for the challenge. That sounds strong. You guys think you have what it takes to take out Brazil? I think we definitely have a fair chance. All right, gentlemen, I can already feel the electricity in here, but I feel, feel something else too. Is this... Is this friendship? Well, we did have a bit of a chat before we actually did this little <laughs> skit here, and well, I think me and Yoda are good friends. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys, you're gonna need to put that aside and head out to the battlefield because we've got the first match of the day coming up. Yoda is actually super friendly. He told me a lot about like the Brazilian stuff, and he's really happy to talk to him because he actually played in like MSI and stuff as well. So he's super experienced, and I'm really looking forward to like talk to him more and. Captain Monk is actually really, really friendly because when I talked to him, like I was taking a picture with him and he's like, hey, we are friends, you can get closer to me, you know, <laughs> and I feel really like welcome and he talked to me a lot about like, how he do his YouTube stuff and like a lot of entertain entertaining builds and stuff. Yeah, really great to know. Excited to, uh, to hear about Monk and his team. Uh, he calls himself the weakest link, so he must have put together a pretty strong roster. Why don't we check out a video and get to know Team North America a little bit better? The team building phase, where five individual players will train and learn to work together to become one unstoppable team. Ooh. Wow, look at that, dude. Ben. Arriving at the boot camp house was nothing like I expected. Uh, had no idea that we were staying in this like beautiful penthouse in Toronto overlooking the city. It was absolutely gorgeous, so that was definitely awesome. And uh, super grateful for all of that. Look at this view. Ooh. I think we did it. Wow, can you believe it, man? We made it. We made it. It was a nice, beautiful view of Toronto, and I get to see amazing view every morning and at night, too. Yeah, I was one of the first people to arrive, me and our top laner, Flares. So I got to know him a little bit, and then we slowly got to meet everyone as they came into the house, and it was really cool seeing all these people. I'm really happy with the choices I made for the players. 
There was some second guessing partway through, uh, not this weekend, but just like the process of discovering the players. But once the players were locked in and the flights were decided, I knew this was the roster no matter what I do now, so I wanted to make the most of it. And I'm really glad I took this decision. Thank you for all being here. I'm glad you guys can make it because I specifically chose you guys and I wanted you all to be here. We are here in Toronto at our boot camp. We've got this amazing penthouse suite and we've got all these activities ahead of us that we'll be taking on to bond as a team as best as we can. We're all set up to do this because of ASUS and ROG because they want us to potentially be the next superstars in the esports scene because we are the representatives of North America and this is our boot camp. Yeah, yeah let's go. Let's, let's do it. I'm really glad that Captain Monk gave me the opportunity to play to carry and hopefully I can prove myself on the international stage that I am uh, one of the best in North America. The Aces laptops that we were given were some of the best computers I've ever played on too. Like I'm not just saying that either, like it's way better than the computer I have in my house. So being able to play gear on like a, a laptop that runs so smooth is a great experience and I think it, uh, it actually helps you play a lot too, so it was a good time. I think boot camping is a very good thing because it's very important for the players to be able to have that personalized experience face to face because there's only so much you can learn about each other and how you play the game uh, through playing the game. It's important to develop those skills playing the game, but there's so much more that a team needs to develop outside the game uh, in face to face interactions. When Kazavank told us that we were going to go up the CN Tower, I was kind of nervous at first because I I'm, I'm, I'm kind of scared of heights. Edge walk is what it's called. Basically, it's just climbing up this super tall building. It's like one of the tallest buildings in the world. And then going on this small five foot platform and just walking around and doing all these cool uh, team building exercises like hanging off the edge and looking straight down. Like, I think it's over a thousand feet or something. So it was a really cool experience. It was a good bonding experience to do it because we all went as a team, so seeing one person do it after another and then having to do it all at the same time really connected us because I felt that doing it individually, some people might have even chickened out, but doing it all together side by side, it really bonded us together. So the next thing we did was we went to an arcade and actually played League in the arcade, which was rather interesting because we were set up to play League like it's a competitive setup, but at the same time, we're surrounded by kids and adults all running around, making lots of noise, everyone's having fun, and there was music playing, there was just things happening everywhere. There was all the possible distractions you could imagine, and we still managed to play through the game. The environment is going to be similar to how we're going to play in the Sweden with a lot of noise and people walking around. Since we got playing such environment already, we'll be ready for the final. We can do really well in Sweden if we all just are connected together and we're in sync because when you're in sync, you're all on the same page about what to do next. And when that happens, the overall gameplay about how to win the game, it, it becomes very simple. So it's all about just being in sync and having a good connection. And for, if we do, then I think we can easily win the tournament. Maybe we'd get rank one during season five and season four. You get rank one both seasons? Yeah, both seasons. My goal is to play on a team to, to qualify for world and play in the world stage. Going to the lead here for NA as Flares finds Ooh. himself at Kha'Zix and he can't go invisible quickly enough as the ultimatum just follows him to his doom. People here on this map, Paddlestar gonna chunk down small, the flash oh. in! Oh, oh my, my god! Okay, that is just you're just gonna chuck down the W and then Double everything's kill. going to be fine. Cleaning people up, the slow's coming in. I want to be able to prove myself as a pretty good North American mid laner. I want to show that I can hold my own versus pros. People say, yeah, I mean, like, certain people are good at certain things, but wow, this guy's actually pretty good when he actually tries and stuff like that, so mm -hmm. just proving myself. Can he get the... Shurima shuffle on yeah. Tori. Oh, he's catches, gonna do him. It. catches him after the flash there as well. Barrier and the shield coming down from Inspire, but that will be a very dead Cogmore. Wilder has to use his dancing shoes. Flashes, gets out of the way, but not out of the way enough as Peckinwolf underneath the tower isn't too bothered, goes down to half health, but that's going to be fine. I'm looking to make history at this one. First, we're going to win this tournament in Sweden. Hell yeah. And then I'm going to get on TSM. Then I'm going to go to Korea, get rank one Korea, solo queue. And then also, I mean, if I was on TSM with the Worlds, it'd be pretty fun. That'd be pretty cool but too. But rank, rank one, Korean solo queue. Yeah, and you heard it here first, that's the goal. Yeah.
It's not going to be his name. It's a little bit too long. So Tim Luke, I'm going to start though. this fight off. And he's just going full vein right now. Buzz, it's oh. going to be a constellation kill here as Koshka gets himself out of the way. Look, it's bottom lane. We're still continuing the action. Dragon's Descent back available again for Wilder. Yeah, on the hunt comes in as Wilder's looking for it. He's going to try and predict a flash as Team Luke's able to pick up the kill into Dolan. This is a little bit embarrassing now as McNoon going to make his way in. Curtain call canceled oh, a little bit early there as McNoon's underneath the turret and Team Luke is still alive. Long term goal here is to uh, beat Faker in a 1v1 as a support. Yeah, there you go. So maybe one day at All-Stars, you know, I'll be one of the few supports they actually pick for the 1v1s and I can take down Faker. That'd be pretty sweet. Easy hit, because yeah. with the uh, decreased movement speed, hang on, here's the oh. engage. Speaking of which, that's a stun coming out as well. The Ignite coming down on the bottom Ooh. side of the map. Is it going to be enough damage? There it is! First Blood comes in for T-Money. Karma, as you said, is adding so much to his kit. Team oh, Luke, God. you can't run. You have to stand oh, and fight here. to get out of the way is Team Luke. Oh, is he going to get taken down? No, does have the Eye of the Storm oh. there. As Tori somehow still alive, not able to do it. A Cathy in surprise could be a lot of damage, but it's not enough as the Monsoon's there. Joining us on stage now to offer some insight into uh, the North American strategies. How was this match for you? Uh, this match was a lot of fun for us. Uh, I liked how we were able to, in the first game, just really be as calculated as possible and really just look to make the win happen. But in the second game, we wanted to have some fun with it. And so there were some fights where we went back and forth and things weren't exactly going our way, but we managed to keep our heads head ho held high and managed to have some laughs here and there. So overall, <laughs> it, was, it was a really good time. We did see you guys laughing a little bit on the player cams. I mean, what's the attitude like overall on the team? Well, I mean, you miss a skill shot, you make fun of somebody, next thing you know, everyone's <laughs> laughing at them. Uh. <laughs> and uh, this experience overall has been pretty cool for, for every team involved, but how has your team transformed over the course of the boot camp, uh, playing online, and now being here in Stockholm? Well, I think when I first drafted my team, we didn't really have much time to actually practice as a team, but I knew at the end of the day from the research I did all on my players, I kind of had an idea of how they would all play. But with that all said and done, I still wanted to play with them a few times just to get a feel of how I would fit into everything. So luckily I did manage to do that, but I think with the boot camp, it was really significant for us to have outside of the game connection experiences. And I think doing that edge walking was really like the biggest thing because, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm not lying when I, when I say like there was like two or three instances where I was like, nope, done. I gotta go inside. I'm like, nope, sorry guys, I'm out. <laughs> but I didn't, and I kept thinking, you know, maybe if I don't, somebody else will, and then we'll get to go inside. But no one broke. Everyone mm. stuck true, and it was just that's when I knew I could stick with this team because nobody broke under the pressure.